language and speak English. It doesn't always help. It doesn't always help. So I did that experiment. I've explained all that. Those who use English in the homes, those who use both English and Akan, those who use only Akan. So these are where the findings, okay? So the findings I've explained, a grasp of native language appears to mediate second language reading comprehension rather than undermining it. It does not undermine it. In fact, they borrow the orthographic skills, the phonemes, and all that from their native language into the second language. So, while it may be past sufficient skills in English, it does not necessarily mean that because of that, there will be better academics than those who start with the native language. So as the level of difficulty moves, okay, you see that those who are well-versed in the mother language perform better. So, the findings suggested that when bilinguals mm, using Chi and uh, English are reading the second language, they have a tendency to make efficient use of the prerequisite skills and previous knowledge and other mental processes from their native first language. They make use of that. And therefore, this makes it easier for them to understand language. Good. So even though most children acquire language with little or no difficulty, yes, nevertheless, my findings also suggested that acquiring reading skills in the second language nevertheless also demands more effort and more teacher instruction. So these are a few of my research, just an iota, because we have, we have to pay attention to time, I can offer all. So these are some of the researches that I have done. Now, moving to the last part of my lecture, so what? What implications have these findings for teacher education? Now, my findings suggest that challenges with literacy skills, whether it's reading, whether it's writing, whether it's computation, in many of our schools, could be attributed psychologically to working memory challenges. It's not that the kids are dumb. It's not that they are not intelligent. It is working memory challenges. So teachers should not be quick enough to label them as unintelligent. It's never the case. In fact, there's one psychologist, I won't mention his name. When the teacher called the parents to the school and told the parents to take the child home because he's dull. And the only way that he can do is to become a cobbler, a Shishan boy. That boy was a famous psychiatrist. Studied very hard because of what the teacher said. He knew that the teacher was wrong. Studied very hard. Did science, did medicine, and specialized in psychiatry. So if you read all his psychology, I said, I'm not going to mention his name. His psychology is what we refer to psychology of affirmation. Psychology of encouragement. So for those of you teachers here, never write off a child and say he's unintelligent. It's just like a medical doctor. You're a medical doctor. Somebody is sick, he comes to you. And then you tell the person, oh, you're too sick, go away, I can't look after you. So it is not the case, at least my investigations, it is not the case that our kids are not intelligent. That is not the case. They are dealing with mental load. Most of their problems are working load at the memory level. Certain things that should become automatic. For them, they do what's called serial processing one by one, like a tortoise. 
instead of doing what they call parallel processing, like the intelligence one, they see things in parallel. Okay, and relate ideas quickly. They are not able to do that. It doesn't mean they are not intelligent. So the teachers here, pay attention to that. The second point for teacher education, it is working memory that can influence both the duration that a fact remains in the working memory and the probability that it is consolidated in the long term. Memory. Again, it is the working memory. It is the working memory. So based on this, four pedagogical interventions have been suggested in my studies on the working memory for teacher education. They are there. First, teacher education, especially in our colleges of education, in the universities, we have time to expose students to this. But in the colleges, there's very little awareness of this. Working memory problems, especially acquisition of basic languages, they just see the child as unintelligent. But the problem is not intelligence, the problem is working memory challenges. And therefore, most teachers, especially at the basic level, who graduate from our colleges of education, most of them are not aware about working memory. And that children with deficient working memory have memory failures, not that they are not intelligent. And they begin to manifest in poor literacy acquisition. So pay attention to that, those who are involved in teacher education. Therefore, it is critical to teach teachers, expose them to the psychological concept of working memory, illustrating text in which working memory plays a critical role. Second, our teacher education needs to expose teacher trainees more than ever to adapt a form of teaching that is aimed at reducing memory load, especially for already struggling students. They are already struggling. Don't give them too many assignments because you have to finish the syllabus. I know why you are clapping. University is different. University is different. University, you are not struggling students. Otherwise, you will not be in the university. So we'll continue to give you more assignments. I'm talking of the basic levels. Who are still struggling? You are not struggling. Okay? Now, this point for me is important because this is especially the case where in this country, we have so many instances of some disadvantaged children from rural home backgrounds. Don't forget that they are more used to oral communication than printed communication. So they carry this advantage to the schools. And therefore when they come, and certain things that you can use audiovisuals for them to get the consolidation first, and then you start writing symbols that they have never met on the blackboard. It doesn't help them. The third approach, especially for those teachers who are teaching reading, in any case, let us pay attention to this. A teacher who is not a reading teacher must not teach reading at the basic level. It's as simple as that. But here we have a situation where somebody is in social studies and he's teaching reading. It 
It's incorrect. I'm telling you elsewhere. People with PhD in psychology, they are teaching back class one. Of course, they are very well paid. They are very well paid. Because over there, they feel that the foundation is more important. So it's PhD holders who teach at this level. But you see, we have a situation where we think that anything goes. So social, oh, social studies, you can teach primary one. Go and teach. Please, you are doing more harm than good. You are doing more harm than... And that is what is manifested. In the public school, in the private schools, where you know people have their own managers that that are not belong to the public, the manager will see that you employ teachers who are professionals, okay, who are going on retirement from public, and then they come there and help. It's one of the reasons why they do better. They just they won't just put anybody there to teach reading. So my point is that. It is very important for teachers to assess students with learning difficulties. Help them to identify possible areas that could become problematic for them. That is the purpose of the continuous assessment anyway. The continuous assessment is to help you, the teacher, to monitor the learning progression of your students. And where you see that they have problems, go back, sit them down, even if it's extracurricular, not to charge the parents, by the way, you redress these problems. Otherwise, my brothers, if you continue the way we are continuing, our basic schools in the rural areas, we are going to get more problems. I gave you the statistics. And why I'm passionate about this, when I was growing up, I'm telling you, the reverse was the case. The public basic schools were better. When I was growing up. Because those days, we used to have teacher catechists. If it's a Roman Catholic primary school, the teachers are passionate with what they are doing. They are not about salaries. Now they are saying the other way around. The public schools supposedly are said to have more professionally trained teachers. And yet, when they go to BEC, you know what happens. The public schools, the private schools, that supposedly don't have professional teachers, they perform better. So pay attention to that. Pay attention to that. It's not every parent who will get money and send a child to a private school. It's not possible. So my findings taught me that we, we have a serious problem in our areas, which were not the case when I was growing up. I went to public school, of course, to Roman Catholic school, but public. And at, the, at the age of 12, getting to 13, I passed common entrance and entered secondary school. In those days, some who had finished middle school from four, Stayed home for three years, I went to join them. Those who had finished middle school from four, I went to join them. And yet when the exam started, we beat all of them. That was those days. Public basic schools. And some of these guys came from so-called international schools in Gomase. But now, it's the other way around. So all these things that I'm saying, I'm not saying it because I don't have any basis. I have an empirical basis. If you say that a lion walked towards John, John ran away. He ran away. The he belongs refers to who? You say lion. We need to pay attention to that. So pay attention to all these things, activities that do not impose heavy load. Make sure there are things that are too long, have too long sentences. Make sure you make them as brief as possible for the struggling ones, so that they'll be able to have some understanding. And this explains the 
the psychological wisdom in many places, including Ghana, officially, of teaching at the basic schools, especially lower primary, using the vernacular. But it's not possible. If you're an Akan and you're transferred to Dagari, Upper West, the case there are all Dagaris. Are you going to use Akan? That is where the challenge is. But I'm saying the psychological reason for this is what I'm explaining. At that initial stage, use the language they understand better to teach them. Conclusion. So this is the real conclusion. <laughs> As a country, we have made significant improvement in education. No two ways about that. No two ways about that. But, in spite of all the improvements that you have made, making education accessible to every child, irrespective of social economic background of parents, the fact still remains that learning achievement is low. We cannot ignore that. Now, public basic school, especially the deprived basic school, and when we compare it this with the resources that you have invested, Learning outcome is still low. So poor reading skills, dyslexia, generally suggest deficits in the working memory, such as eye fixation, letter identification, phonemes, things that are supposed to be automatic. So deficits in these perceptual processes affect executive functioning, when you say executive functioning, going higher, to make inferential comprehension of what the text has not said. They can do that because they are struggling, even at the, at the lower level. They can have comprehension monitoring. They can ask themselves, is what I'm reading, am I understanding it? Can I read, paraphrase it in my own way? They can do that. So poor phonetics are a significant indicator of early literacy problems, and teachers should pay attention to this. The ability to take part, analyze sounds in words, requires the student to have a strong, active memory. And most of my findings suggest that specific sources of difficulties in reading and language, typical Ghanaian peoples, are working memory challenges. So it's about time the teacher education, teacher education, especially the colleges of education, puts more emphasis on the inexplicable link between human limited cognition and classroom practice. So I end this with a quotation by one Robert John Meehan, don't struggle to be a better teacher than everybody else. Simply be a better teacher than you ever thought you could be. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> professor deserves an applause. 
The next item on the program is congratulations and presentations. And the congratulations, it will follow this order. The chairman of council will congratulate him, followed by the president, my lord bishops around, professors, deans, and other dignitaries. So that is the order. So uh, because of the COVID protocol, there won't be any handshake, a wave or a fist greeting will be fine. So I'll call on my chair, chairman of council, Most Reverend Matthew Jemphy, to take the lead. President, President. <laughs> wow. My Lord, my Lord Bishops present. My Lord Bishops present. Representative of uh, the President of uh, the Vice Chancellor of UCC. <laughs> Professors present. of faculty, deans of faculty. Other dignitaries present. Other dignitaries present. Other dignitaries present. Let me let me acknowledge the presence of these dignitaries as they come. We have uh, Reverend Father Dr. Patrick Nkrumah. He was a senior lecturer here and former dean of Faculty of Religious Studies. Reverend Father Dr. Peter Yawaponkumi, our chaplain. We also acknowledge the presence of all deans and HODs here. Then Professor Felix Adekoya, Adeboya, Acting Pro VC of UNER. Monsignor Richard Treme, St. Teresa of Avila, Avila Bricum.
Mr. Justice Boateng, Affiliation Coordinator, UCC. And then our Acting Finance Officer, Mr. Paul Pamiyebua. Then, uh, Father Judge Adusu, Father. It's okay. This is a special request. Our Bishop Emeritus Peter Kwesisa Pong we want to say a word. So we will send him the speaker. Hello. 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 Presentations. But before we go, we proceed to the presentations. Dr. Patrick Jassy, former dean, RCST. Presentations will follow the following order. There will be a presentation by the university, and this honor will be done by the chairman of council, Most Reverend Matikwe Sijemfi. And this will be followed by a presentation.
from the Faculty of Education, and then a presentation by the SRC, the Faculty of Education. The presentation will be done by Reverend Father Dr. Augustine Uswado. And then the SRC presentation will be done by the SRC president, Mr. Donald Avise. So, Monsignor Professor Stephen Intim. The Catholic University College of Ghana, FIAPRE, gives you this certificate as an award for delivering the first inaugural professorial lecture. And your dedicated service to Catholic University College of Ghana, FIAPRE. Congratulations. This function is being covered on CAK TV, GV, Facebook, YouTube, Facebook, uh, and all that. So you can assess it. Now, presentation by the Faculty of Education, Dean of Faculty of Education. faculty is happy today because he groomed all of us and when he left office we, the university didn't have to hire anybody because there was enough competent qualified staff to take his place so here we are for all that you have done nurtured us we have our able English professor to read to you from our hearts as our point of reference in gratitude for all that you have done for us. For members of staff, faculty of education, citation in honor of Reverend Monsignor Professor Stephen Intim for creating and inspiring high academic moral standards to motivate and inspire the faculty of education. Your contribution to Catholic University College the church and academia in general have earned the admiration of the faculty, students and staff. By sharing your enormous knowledge in academia, you have transformed the lives of many people. The faculty of education, administrators, students and the entire community commend you for the 15 years of distinguished and outstanding service to the faculty and the university college at large. You were the first Dean of the Faculty of Education of the Catholic University College of Ghana and served in this position for over 12 years, July 2007 to July 2020, nurturing the then infant faculty and designing most, almost all the 12 academic postgraduate and undergraduate programs currently run in the faculty. During your tenure as Dean, the faculty received outstanding recognition on both local and international platforms. You established and designed a strong faculty by guiding and motivating staff to reach their professional objectives. 
Your hallmark is nurturing and encouraging students to be productive citizens in the community. Despite your heavy academic and administrative schedules, you are always at the forefront of creating and revising the curriculum for our courses and other community engagement initiatives. Based on your role as an educator, advisor, academic and exemplary dedication to scholarship, the Faculty of Education always remain indebted to you for your ingenuity, commitment and dedication to all and sundry. Please accept this citation as a token of our sincere appreciation on the occasion of your inaugural professorial lecture. The consistency of, of good people in our faculty is what makes us great. We appreciate your efforts and level of commitment to the faculty, the university college, the Catholic church, and the world at large. Ayiko, Reverend Monsignor, Professor Stephen and team. On behalf of the faculty, Reverend Father Augustine Ousu Ado, PhD Dean, Faculty of Education. It is the turn of the SRC and is to be done by the president of the SRC, Mr. Donald Advise. Mr. Advise. Thank you. The Council of Chairman, the President, Kaliki University of Ghana, all protocols observed. On behalf of the Student Representative Council, I read this citation electronically whilst we do the hard copy by tomorrow due to some technical challenges. And I read. <laughs> Catholic University College of Ghana, Fiafra, students Representative Council, citation in honor of Reverend Monsignor Professor Stephen Intim. Congratulations on your promotion to full professorship. There were no easy routes to your way to accomplishing this feat. Your hard work and commitment have brought you a successful outcome. Congratulations once again on your achievement. SRC 2020-2021. Thank you. On this note, we will continue the program. We will, have, we will take a, a musical interlude, musical interlude. And it's supposed to be done by Pax Romana, Pax Romana Choir.
Now, we will um, invite the president to give his concluding remarks. President. Thank you very much. The professor has spoken. So I am not coming here to dilute <laughs> the message that the professor has delivered this evening. So we thank Monsignor for being the first professor at the Catholic University College of Ghana. I think you recall that around the 1991, there was the subject religious and moral education was so zoom under cultural studies. So the church has to stand up. And the Catholic Church and one of the resource persons that they sent during the national dialogue was Monsignor. And in that, in, in that meeting, he develop, delivered a paper, and the title of the paper was Teach a Child Without Religion, and You Teach Him to Be a Clever Devil. And based on the recommendations and the strong arguments that superior arguments that he put up, the religious and moral education became a subject on its own. So we thank you, Professor. So, so I just have some few take-home messages that I'm taking home. So I hope you're also going to take that home. Most importantly, the teachers, you now know that the working memory is the foundation of all the pedagogical interventions. So we need to be able to understand the psychological content of this working memory. To the students, you see that the professor, any time that he explains the concept and the theory, he gave us specific examples. He gave specific exam examples so that's your take home message in your examinations. If you answer any question, provide specific examples to justify your, your destiny. Then to the students, you know, he told you about rehearsal. If you don't rehearse, you forget. So don't wait till the last minute before you, you go on mining you will collapse during the examinations. <laughs> so continuous regular rehearsing is very critical for, for you. Now you, 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 said, you mentioned some of the people in rural communities. You realize that the University of Ghana, KNUSC, they have some concessional admission for students in rural deprived institutions. And I can tell you, in Lego and KNUSC, USD consistently for five years when I was in Lagos, all the best graduating students were those that were from deprived schools. So it's not the school that you attend that is important, what you put in. It has also made us understand the importance of affirmation and encouragement. So as teachers, as parents, it's important that we affirm, we encourage our children, even as those managers, your subordinates, encourage them when they do something that is good because they are very, very critical for, for the way the people you able to manage. And lastly, you know, he answered the question, so what? So if you are a researcher, anything that you do, the question that you have to ask of, so what? After 10 years, 5 years of this research, what is it contributing to knowledge? What are the implications of the work that I'm, I've done? So it's very, very important that you answer 
that thing, anything that you do. So on that note, I want to thank my, my Lord Bishops for, for coming, President uh, Emeritus, stand all the way from Kumasi. We thank you very much, and may God bless us all. Thank you. It's now the time for benediction. Hello? Hello? Yes, it's time for closing prayer and benediction. And we we'll invite most. Seven team. We want to thank you for his courage to share his knowledge and wisdom with us today. We ask you, Lord, to bless us with such people in this institution. Continue to shower your blessings on us and grant us your strength and your power to be able to courageous, to be courageous and solve the problems of our world today. May we tell new first and grant this school also the courage to do so. We entrust our dignitaries, our bishops who came from near and far. We entrust all our invited guests, our friends who came from near and far into your loving care. Accompany them home and bless them a safe journey. We also entrust this institution into your loving care. We ask you to bless it. Bless it with more of such gifts, the gift of more professors to steer the affairs of this institution. Grant the students who are here to be also living examples of the good work we are doing here, so that one day they will take over from us and continue the good work that we have done. We ask all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is master of all wisdom, master of all knowledge, master of all strength, through whom we share in the spirit of God, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord, we lead us, give us seven edition. Your Excellencies, before the blessing, I would like, with your kind permission, to bless God for my senior priest and my priest now in Kumasi for this unique scholarship in professorship, for this excellence and distinction delivered in proverbial simplicity and classical humility with finesse and prowess. With finesse and prowess, I really want to thank God with you as I bless you and all of us. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless and keep you. Amen. May his countenance shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he go ahead of you to show you the way. May he be behind you to support you. May he be by your side to guide you. May he be above you to give you a shield. For he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High God abides in God's presence. Amen. May he be a foundation sure on whom you will stand and never be shaken. Finally, may he be in you by his spirit. When he is in you by his spirit, you are greater than all challenges outside. May he so bless your mother Ghana the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now it's time for recession. Kitty Group.
Hello. Please, for refreshment, the VIP, VVIP will go to council chamber. Staff and other invited guests will be at the foyer of this story building, top, top floor. While students will have their refreshment right here. Thank you very much. For a Christ as soon as you encounter Catholic Archdiocese of Kumasi Media, CAC Media, and I hear Damasi, Semrebiano, yes, so from a mutin, near some Macaba, a bay, you may dear and you know, so. Yes, dear, here and say, you may dear, 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 bravo, Celebia won't say a becantino, or call YouTuber, no, but CAC TV GH, C A K T V GH, no, I subscribe, you may dear, Biano won't say a becant, maybe I will be a Facebook, so, sanity, yen yamumu, and also C A K TV. Now I like it. No one's hand for look. Yes, Shama Sia Ubenya. Yes, see Rosia Ubenya. Archbishop Gabriel Jasia or not or Casa Ubenya. Say ye Jumedia Bia Benediction. Ye anniversary. Jumedia Bia parishes a hoodwork kumase. Any Ghana, any we are simple time will be a no cack media. Ye back ho ne de in some day wo e de a brew and so. In subscribe. Nekoso eti yene neti nyame ne ensu omu na ye insha. Medina wen father in manu akobna ifa eje. I'm your communication director for Kumasi Catholic Archdiocese, CAC Media, credible news and true Christian teachings. Thank you.